Hello traders and welcome to another extra special webinar from myself, Yaroslav Brachenko. I am a chief market analyst at Olymp Trade, and today we are going to be talking about a very important asset class. And no, it is not going to be Cisco. It is going to be Bitcoin. For those of you guys that are totally new to trading, this webinar is probably mm, going to be just a little bit out of your maybe comprehension, maybe reach, but I'm going to try to bring to you very precise and detailed information about trading Bitcoin, about trading crypto, how it kind of works itself into the market, what it means, what our price parameters are, what the support and resistance level is going to be, how it compares to gold, how it compares to the equity market, and a lot of other good stuff. Also today we are going to be having a giveaway to all of you that participated in my previous webinar, let me go ahead and give you the link right now in chat. It has to do with MT4. It is a very strong platform, which by the way, you can use to trade um, Bitcoin. So I'm going to go ahead and send you the link in chat right now. Give me one sec, you guys. There we go. If you guys have any questions at any point during the webinar, make sure to leave your question in the chat because today I will be spending more time than usual answering all of your questions. I have a few citations from very respectable uh, investment funds and also some analysis from Bloomberg. So today we're going to dive deep into Bitcoin trading, what it is, how we can do it. And I do want to say what's up to Abel J, who was the first in chat. Also, a big warm welcome to Tinker and Muhammad Tariq. By the way, for you guys, I have an extra, extra special thing. In about a week from now, I want to do an interview with you guys. At the end of the webinar, after it's finished, in the comments section below, I want you guys to write if you want to participate in the interview. Uh, we can do something where we show your face, something like, like I do these webinars, or we can do a sound interview over Skype or Zoom. Uh, we'll figure out the technical details of it. So if you're interested in doing a one-on-one -on -one interview with me live, go ahead and write your contact, or not your contact information, but your account number and express your desire to do the interview with me and I will make sure to contact you through your contact details on the platform. So basically all you need to do is send your uh, account ID so that then um, somebody can contact you from support and then we can get your contact details and I'll give you a call on Skype. So it's actually an incredible way to uh, interact with me and also to share your ideas with the other traders because I know some of you guys from chat, J Jayashri, Reva Kumar, Muhammad Tariq, Tinker, I know you guys pretty well. You guys are good guys. So it would be awesome to have you guys on a webinar together with me. Now, with all of that uh, gotten taken care out of the way, I know you guys can hear me. I know that Muhammad Tariq is from Egypt. It's very good to have you guys with me. Let's start with Bitcoin. Now, what is Bitcoin up to? What is going on? What do we see here? Right now, Bitcoin is constantly in the price discovery phase. There was a previous time where also uh, price discovery changed from uh, a regular traded asset into an institutionally traded asset in 2017. Now I unfortunately don't have that history chart uh, here. Actually you can see it in FTT. So fixed time trade, let's go ahead and get Bitcoin. I do believe that the history goes back far enough that we can have a look at the graph in 2017. So basically, uh, as you're trading uh, Bitcoin towards the end of the year, this kind of growth was considered to be parabolic. It was considered to be mind blowing. It was it, it was considered to be the the craziest growth of a financial asset since the tu the uh, tulip mania in in uh, ancient. Uh, uh, in, in Danish, uh, in, in the start of the stock market in the Danish culture. So if you guys have studied the stock market or economics even a little bit, you would have uh, learned about the tulip mania. And that's what we had in 2017. Bitcoin was being traded officially 
on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And so today we're going to be comparing uh, those two periods. So let's have a look. In order to set up two graphs on your graph, all you guys have to do is click this button right here. So I have Bitcoin here, this kind of parabolic growth, and then we have Bitcoin here. And this is present day, present day Bitcoin. So you guys can see how, how it's very, very similar. This is the end of the year, right? Have a look. I'm looking at this part and this part right here. Let's get rid of the Boyinger bands. So the market is, is very, very similar, very similar. So what we're having now is after the new year, after the new year, we had a large correction. So this was the large correction, same thing that we had in 2017. And then after a few attempts, uh, the price then fell. And so after after a, a little bit, unfortunate that we have this here, BTC. So at the end of 2017, Bitcoin fell. But as you guys saw, as I was showing you right here, the rise, this rise was incredible, was parabolic. So now we're stuck with a situation that looks very, very similar. I'm going to go ahead and close this and then go all the way to our uh, present time, where we are right now on the daily graph. So you guys can kind of, actually, this will still help us. What we're trying to do is forecast where Bitcoin can go, what the factors of growth are, uh, what the factors for a sell-off would be. And as you guys can see, this looks like a normal market correction that when we break out to the top, which we are very close to doing, we can continue up higher. Uh, the the support and resistance levels, this is very important, you guys. Draw them out on your graph together with me. Pull out a horizontal line and find the 50,000 mark. Somewhere around here. This is a level of resistance that, if broken, means Bitcoin is on a path higher. The support level is at 30,000. Now, why 30,000, you ask? Well, obviously because it's been used as support before, but this is huge. It's almost twice what Bitcoin was in the start of the year. Why is it so so uh, big? Why is the support level so high up? 30,000 for one single Bitcoin. Mind-boggling. It is due to institutions, banks, hedge funds, investment funds, ETF funds. They are all investing in Bitcoin. We have the likes of MasterCard and the likes of Visa publicly speaking about incorporating cryptocurrency, not only Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency as a form of payment, as a form of transactional payment in their payment system. So basically, you can use your credit card and pay with Bitcoin. Very soon to come, folks. Very soon to come. The global economy is adopting Bitcoin as a reserve currency. Hello, Mr. Dr. Manaji, Paul. It is a reserve currency. Why do I say that? Now, you guys are all aware of what happened last year. Interest rates fell down close to zero across the board, across the world. And quantitative easing added almost $8 trillion of money, of cash, into the economy. Now, a lot of it is digital. So when I say cash, understand I'm just using slang for money. Uh, the, the amount of money that was created, that was put into existence last year, is amazing, is incredible. It's about 10% of all the money that was all available in the entire world. Another 10% was added in one single year. Inflation just exploded your money. You can kiss your money goodbye. 
a lot of money across the world has lost in value. The U.S. dollar has lost in value. The Indian rupee has lost in value. The Russian ruble has lost in, in value. Gaining, what is gaining? We have the Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, because they are commodity currencies, and commodities are growing across the board. And we also have the likes of the European euro. It's not good. If your currency is growing right now, your economy is going to have some problems. Now, there's not a lot of problems for the Japanese yen or the Australian dollar because they're exporting economies. They don't mind so much because people need to buy commodities. They're not going anywhere. So when you bring that money back home, it's worth less. That's the, that's the, the issue. And Europe is trying to be an exporting economy. The United States is trying to be an exporting economy. So not necessarily good if you're if your uh, the value of your currency is growing right now so it's going it, it will lead to some troubles up ahead now i wanted to show you a graph of gold because gold was going to be for me there were some really good trades that i put on uh early last year but now look at this look at this droop and froop i i i don't know how to explain this this is just bitcoin has taken now now mind you remember this is June July August so somewhere in August the the position changed and what do we have in Bitcoin June July August come August Bitcoin took off so when I say that Bitcoin is now the reserve currency of the world that's what I mean gold it has lost that place now the reason for this being is that there needs to be an area where money is kept so that it stores its value does that make sense in order for us to invest there needs to be an area where you can invest and it will keep and hold its value gold historically used to be that that gauge and in fact it used to be an inflation counter and it used to be a quantitative easing counter every time the Federal Reserve would turn on the printing press gold would gain would would grow significantly and it wasn't because that that gold was being used in in the uh, in medicine or in computer uh, creation it's because gold was that store of value people are used to it Old-time investors like uh, Warren Buffett and who, who else do we have that in, um, invest in gold? Uh, the gentleman who broke the Bank of England. I can't. George Soros, right? These guys are used to. They George Soros lived through. Well, he didn't live through the Second World War, but he was a investor after the Second World War, and so he caught on to a lot of those easy, simple, logical investments. Well, guess what, guys? What is driving the uh, the market, the speculative market right now. Fintech and any kind of new technological advances in financial technology and speculation. Those are the fundamental drivers that move Bitcoin. So when you're looking for news, how to learn uh, what's going on in Bitcoin behind the scenes, keep in mind that Fintech and any kind of advances in Fintech and um, speculation is the driver what do I mean by speculation when you see a big old candle like this break a previous level like this this is called speculation you need to buy the asset at that time this is the best time Bitcoin is very very structured in the way that it moves it's a very technical asset so that's the reason I have moving averages support and resistance lines and trend lines on my Bitcoin graph and that's it that's all you need price action trading in order to forecast the next move in Bitcoin. So as the world adopts Bitcoin as a store of value, bro, Sutter Feet, I'm going to ask you to, to chill out a little bit in chat or else uh, I'm going to have to uh, kind of cut out. Uh, I'm going to start trading when I finish the lecture. If you don't like it, bro, you can go watch something else. I don't mind. So Bitcoin as a store of value, we have extreme levels that are opportune buying areas if at any time Bitcoin drops down to the level of 20,000 this is an opportune area to buy one sec guys
Good stuff. All right. Um, English is the spoken language in chat. I do ask you guys to keep uh, English as the, the language that you're using. Um, so if ever Bitcoin drops down to the area of 20,000, guys, it's a really, really good area to buy. Is it probable that it's going to drop down there in the next little while? Not necessarily. Happy to see you as well, Karthi Kenyon. Good to have you with us. Um, so how can we reach that level of 20,000? It, it will happen only if we have a, um, a really serious issue with technology, with Bitcoin getting hacked, um, or anything else that would kind of disrupt uh, the investment system as a whole. All right. Um, there are 8,000 plus altcoins that we have uh, available. 8,000 plus. What drives them? Here on the Olymp Trade platform, we do have uh, several cryptocurrencies that you can uh, have a look at. We have the likes of Ethereum, which is actually really, really closely tied and, and sometimes surpasses the volatility and price action of Bitcoin. So sometimes it's even better to invest in Ethereum. We have the likes of Litecoin, which is one of the strongest altcoins available. And then we have the basic altcoin index. The basic altcoin index basically is a, a combination of the top uh, 10 altcoins, excluding Bitcoin. So it's kind of a, a, mm, an index to measure the cryptocurrency sphere, excluding Bitcoin. Um, I wanted to uh, to read you guys something. This is actually really, I'll explain about it after I read it. But the, the reason why so many institutions have jumped on the Bitcoin bandwagon. This is important that you guys understand how the big money flows, how the big money works. Super important, all right? So the risks of missing out exceed Bitcoin failure the risks of missing out. So basically, if you have a hedge fund and you don't have a position in Bitcoin, you missed out a lot of the action. What does this mean, guys? This means that in your own investments, you should also have some uh, a part of your investment in Bitcoin as well. Now, moving on, the rising tide of global liquidity and accelerating digitalization is uniquely supportive of the Bitcoin price. What that means is that as the world economy becomes more and more digitized, as we do more and more of our shopping online, as we uh, get more and more of our services like psychological services, uh, like um, entertainment services, and so on and so forth online, this all supports the Bitcoin economy. Also, we have a very unique situation where the interest rate across the world is very low we have a rising debt to GDP level and the global quantitative easing is very, very strong tailwind for gold, right? Gold should be growing. And I'll show you a graph comparing gold, the S&P 500 and Bitcoin, and you will see how much more effective it would have been to invest in Bitcoin than any other market. Uh, and also this will be going forward in 2021. It's not just backward looking it's also forward looking so stay tuned the uh, the rapidly advancing technology is tilting investors toward increasing acceptance of the digital newcomer to avoid the risk of falling behind guys this is very important if because you and I were retail traders we should always be watching what the uh, big funds are doing now considering there are a few uh, situations where we have uh, certain retail traders um, doing, uh, doing, you know, manipulation of the market where they can basically increase the price of GameStop, of uh, AMC, and of, oh, what was the third one? Guys, give me one sec. Um, I will be right back.
All right, excuse me about that. Uh, so as I was saying, as the advancing technology is tilting investors towards uh, Bitcoin, we as retail traders cannot miss out on the action any longer. I'll show you a few setups that you should look for when you are trading Bitcoin. The world is going digital. It's only logical to expect the price of Bitcoin to rise and more and more institutional funds flowing towards Bitcoin. Now, whew, now that we got that out of the way, this is that was the kind of uh, educational part of the webinar. We're going to transition now into trading a little bit uh, of Bitcoin. And so I wanted to show you guys a few more comparisons so that you guys can pick the asset to trade uh, better. Right, so that it's it's it, it becomes easy for you to pick the asset to trade. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys uh, when we are comparing Bitcoin, uh, let me show you gold. So this is the price of gold uh, during the year. So if we measure 2020, so starting here to the end of 2020, which is right here. You guys can see that uh, the growth was 30%, was about 30%. That's fantastic. And a lot of this is due to the fact that money was being printed. Now we have more money. If we compare this to the S&P 500, we'll see that gold actually outperformed the S&P 500. The S&P 500 grew only 15.8% last year whereas gold grew 30%. Now let's add BTC to this. Do another comparison. Have a look at the growth in Bitcoin. Twenty four hundred and twenty percent, guys. Four hundred and twenty percent is no joke. No joke. Um, very very uh, lucrative, and gold is actually much less risky than the stock market than equities. So again, if you're looking for a investment choice to say open up a position for about a month and leave it there you'll have better results from trading gold than you will have from trading the equities market. And Bitcoin trading will outgrow all of the volatility of the above mentioned assets. So let's have a look at trading where we are now. As you guys can see, this is actually a really good uh, area. Um, of course, when we beat this level, uh, and if we do beat it in the short term, this would be a good place to trade. But I gave you guys that level of resistance of 50 thousand. 50,000 is the level where a lot of institutions will also increase their positions. And as you guys can see, we have already yesterday, we have already pierced and broken through that level. So what I'm looking for is for price to consolidate somewhere above that level or for it to dip down closer to the 50 EMA or WMA, whatever MA you're using. So let's drop down to the one hour graph and have a look at where we're going through. So we just broke through the uh, 100 WMA and we also have confirmation that this is an uptrend. We have, um, we have the 50 breaking both EMAs, we have the 100 breaking the 200 EMA. So everything out of the, the normal technical analysis everything is pointing towards the fact that we're going to go up higher. So fundamentally and technically, we are having um, all of the, um, the needed clues and signals to initiate a Bitcoin trade to the top side. So let's have a look at the other. Uh, right now, in, in the short term, let's see if I can open a trade somewhere around. Looks looks very promising you guys looks very very promising I'm gonna go ahead and throw on my two oscillators that I use 
uh, to kind of check. I do not like the fact that we drop down uh, on the CCI indicator into the 100 area, but I do like the moving average, or excuse me, the, yeah, the right, the moving averages of the MACD going up above and the histogram getting progressively higher. So in my mind, this is a very good buying opportunity. I would kind of like to have the amount be of a larger time frame, like uh, to put on a trade, say, for a few hours rather than, um, than a few minutes. But I will be looking for the upward momentum. Again, what are we looking for? I'm looking to buy. I'm looking for a buy signal. I am worried that this level did not go much higher. You see how we have higher, or excuse me, lower highs. This level is lower than, the, or excuse me, this level is lower than there, and same thing lower here. So it does make me worry, but again, I'm looking for a buying opportunity. Really, really looking for that buying opportunity. The fact that we went above here and stayed above for so long is really uh, interesting. Let's have a look in the history to see how a turnaround looks like. The, the biggest clues that we have for a turnaround is kind of this 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, this kind of 30 minute period where we're going up higher and higher and higher. But where does it initially start, guys? Where is the biggest clue on the graph that it is a good entry point? Who can point this out for me? I see you guys uh, are going uh, crazy in chat. Uh, let me know if anybody can show me where right here on the five minute graph where the or what is the signal that Bitcoin is now ready to grow and we should buy. I'm just looking at chat seeing if you guys have any questions. <laughs> Milind Bahunshali, thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, best person. Uh, I'm really glad you have come on time. Uh, Shibu Sharma, I'm really sorry that you had lost such a large amount. Um, definitely stick to a more uh, passive strategy so that you're not risking so much. Uh, let's see. Jay Chico Chibuki, thank you so much for, for support. No one will succeed if you don't learn. Stop begging for live trading. Learn from these experts. Shivlin, good stuff. That red candle. All right. Um, I'll tell you guys. The level before this area, there was another clue that price was going to go higher. And that's a cross of these moving averages. When the 50 EMA, and this pertains specifically, guys, write this down. When the 50 EMA crosses over the 100 EMA, that is the, the signal that we have that it's ready to trade. It even went before, so right here, an area right before that would be the CCI indicator. But because it's really choppy right here, it's really hard to tell. But this cross, this level right here, was the best area to get in during the last spike. You see how much it would have gotten you? We would have taken this from 47,000 to 52,000. This is really incredibly strong, um, a really incredibly strong signal. So we kind of had that false alarm right here, but we are looking for the cross right here. So we are still waiting and waiting and looking for, but when the 50 WMA crosses the 100, that is a really good trade signal and use it when you're trading Bitcoin. Same thing to the bottom. Absolutely same thing to trade to sell. Have a look at this. When the 50 EMA crossed the 100 EMA, that would have netted you at least, at least $2,000 worth of profit. Does that make sense? That's right. Richard H. just made a really good point. It's really hard to uh, figure out the duration for the time. Uh, because this is a five minute graph, it's really hard to tell when it's going to finish. Do you know where it's really easy? Because Bitcoin, we don't know how long a fall will last in Bitcoin. And we don't know how, how long uh, the growth period will last. It's almost impossible to tell.
I'll be honest with you guys. So as an FTT trader, you need to make sure that you catch the impulse and that you're out of the trade as soon as possible. That's my number one recommendation is don't sit in really, really long trades if you're catching an impulse. But if you do consider sitting in Bitcoin for a long time, I would recommend using the Forex platform. The Forex platform gives you that kind of control over the trade so that you pick then what time the asset will finish. You pick what time to close the trade to finish the trade. Yes, in most cases, the profit will be limited because there's only an X10 multiplier. So obviously, you're going to have to take more risk. So 4,000 is the maximum amount that I can uh, trade with my premium account. But that doesn't mean that I can't put on several $4,000 trades, two or three $4,000 trades. But again, you want to make sure that you go in when there's already proof that we're growing or there's proof that we're selling. Again, if you guys have a look here, if you would have sold where the, oh, I already showed you that example. Catching um, to where to sell is much more harder than where to buy. I'll tell you that, guys, for, for a fact. Because if you look at the, the, the platform, or not the platform, you look at where the, the levels to buy from, the most obvious one, the easiest one, is a break of this level. Another kind of indication that we're going up higher, do you see this big old candle? Whenever you have that, that that goes in the main direction of a trend, that's usually an indication that we're going to go in that direction. Um, yeah, so watch out for the long tail wick on the candlestick pattern, on the candlestick chart. That's usually an indication that we are going to, to go up higher. So whenever you see something like that, you can kind of get ready, prepare yourself for a big trade. Remember when I told you guys that uh, yes, risk to reward management is important, and yes, you have to stick to like 1% or 5% of your account. But as you get better in trading, as you gain more and more experience, then what you need to do is um, change your size depending on the position, depending on what you see in the market, the fundamental data, any kind of volume data that you may have. So as you get better in trading, you can have that luxury in changing your uh, trade amount from 1% to uh, something that you may depict better. New signal moving average in five minutes. Thank you for that, Jay Shree. Let's have a look. Uh, what are your moving averages that you use? So actually, I like it. I like it. Let's go ahead and FTT this real quick. So Bitcoin, we are trading on the five-minute chart. I'll go ahead and put on 10-minute trade. Drop the amount to 1,000. Uh, it does appear that we could have a bounce off of the line. I want to see it moving already in that direction. Looks looks really clean, guys. I'm going to go ahead and take this trade. It's really, really clean. Remember when I told you that that um, that cryptocurrency moves very technically, kind of like the British pound? It moves very cyclically and very kind of rigidly following trading rules. Uh, that is what, what I do expect uh, from Bitcoin. I've, I've traded Bitcoin for the last three years, and the... The price action has been very, very um, respectful of levels. And what do I mean by that is, guys, have a look at this. So this was kind of the level of resistance up here. And price really respected it until it didn't. And that's what I mean. This kind of, hmm, how do I say it? This kind of signal is very, very strong. In Bitcoin, you don't have the opportunity to listen to central banks. You don't have an opportunity to listen to miners. It would be great if miners reported how much money they're making, how much they're mining. And actually, I'll give you the numbers. Bitcoin supply, how much is made every day, is limited by code. It is hard-coded in the system. And so right now, every day, 
900 Bitcoins come into existence. 900 Bitcoins. In 2024, that's going to be the next time that the, that the, the, when, the, how, how it's made is halved. It's going to be 450. So after 2024, 450 Bitcoins are going to be made each day. So this kind of equation, uh, the fact that it's finite, the fact that we know ahead of time how much is going to be made, that will cause volatility to drop as time goes down. Volatility will drop. So what that means is that right now, how we're living and, and, and where we're, we're going with this, uh, it means that we have... Um, a lot more opportunity to make money during those breakouts, during those points of interest. Now, the trade seems to be going uh, in our favor. Right now, it's going in our favor. Uh, who was that? Jay Shree, by the way. If, if this trade goes through, buddy, I will be uh, very happy and very glad for your assistance today. All right, I'm going to leave the, the board open. Let's go ahead uh, and have a look at some of the other cryptocurrencies to see if there's any other very similar look at that bitcoin and ethereum look very very similar so my mistake you guys was not waiting for a big candle do you see does anybody notice the pattern that that we have here after we touch the bottom we need to have a solid green candle and then the next candle would be where you need to to buy in we have a solid green candle, then we buy in. Reversal, solid green candle. We don't have that right now. I didn't wait for that solid green candle uh, before I opened the trade. So that is what you're looking for. Whenever you see this chart pattern where we have um, kind of a, a slow grind to the top, you want to make sure that you wait for that solid green candle. It's a good thing that I opened it for 10 minutes, which is twice what the amount is. So either way, I'll know if I was wrong. I was, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong com completely. Not a little bit, but completely. And so that is poor, poor analysis. Ha, uh, Ehab Cairo is with me on this trade. All right, this does not instill confidence in me, you guys. Does not instill confidence. I still have actually six minutes for this trade. I, I am I'm worried about it, but I do believe that the trade will go through. During our last few webinars, most of our trades were good and solid. Actually, we made some money together, so uh, we will see how this will go. So if you guys have any questions about Bitcoin right now would be the time to ask. I'll have a look through your questions and also see what we have in terms of uh, trading opportunities in other assets. If you guys missed the webinar, I noticed that half of you guys came very late. That's okay. There will be a video recording of this uh, webinar so you guys can watch it at your own leisure and at your own time. Yeah, this worries me. I'm not quite sure that, that the trade will go through. Ooh, have a look at this, you guys. The basic altcoin index actually may be a uh, selling opportunity during the webinar today. This looks like a prolonged flag pattern. After a flag pattern, we usually break out to the top. But because it's an index, it's not a freely uh, tradable asset. Not necessarily the same rules apply. So what we do have here is we're looking for short-term kind of technical patterns and then looking to exit the trade. Uh, so when looking at the basic altcoin index, I'll show you guys a level that I'm looking for. Uh, this would be a selling area. So if price breaks below this level, we would be selling this asset. And how do we do that? Well, we can set up a, um, a Forex trade. Ah, it's unavailable to trade there. The Bitcoin alt index, basic alt index is not available. So what we do here is set up a pending order. The quote is 65.14. Rate of return, we obviously want above 74. Set up down trade for about 10 minutes.
there you go so did you guys did everybody catch that what I did was click the um, click the the timer button to set up a pending order I entered the pending order information let's see if you guys all oh, you guys don't see that oh yeah you do perfect so you saw the quote that I set up and then after you set up the pending order it'll appear down here and then I just click down and you can see the result or the the active order right here and then also our, our Bitcoin trade right here so perfect this is what I wanted to see you guys uh, around this level would have been the best time to make the trade um, but because I was under a little bit of pressure to provide you with a trade during the webinar uh, we went ahead and risked it uh, if you don't risk you don't drink champagne uh, there's a saying like that so I'm going ahead and looking for your questions my friends and uh, gonna wrap up the webinar pretty soon good stuff Raymond El Kahaman I'm glad you guys are uh, learning new Jay Ashley Rabbit Kumar you're saying people talk about PI what is that uh, is that also cryptocurrency can you give me a little bit of uh, context where where you heard PI uh, I'm mining PI from quite a while. Is there any chance of it getting anywhere? Uh, I've not heard of PI, but then again, I'm a uh, kind of a standard economist. I look at only the assets that are traded by banks and institutions because there's liquidity there, because I have the opportunity to uh, kind of buy large positions and then get out quickly. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not necessarily watching PI. I do believe that it's an altcoin. Uh, but I haven't. Uh... Uh, Shivlin KP, it's really, I really, are you from India? You're saying that you want to invest in Bitcoin, but the government is planning to ban it in the near future. Uh, I really don't see India doing that. India is, is I, I know a little bit about India. I study the uh, eco economy of the country and very very large accent is made on being a fintech country the financial technology and payment systems that you guys have in India surpass a lot of the advanced economies you have much uh, easier and fluid banking system than even Europe so to ban Bitcoin would kind of be like shooting yourself in the foot because uh, a lot of other countries and a lot of other mm, uh, companies are looking to incorporate Bitcoin in their business model we have PayPal Visa MasterCard uh, JP Morgan Chase um, uh, the Bank of America a lot of these banks are looking to to have their uh, systems use Bitcoin and accept Bitcoin so I don't think that India will ban it there's a lot of uh, con conspiracy going on around that and um, you have to kind of Again, if you don't risk, you don't you don't uh, drink champagne. But I understand what you're saying. Uh, you can always invest through uh, a limp trade, where even if Bitcoin gets banned in India, you still have access to trade it as a financial asset. So that's why I, I show you the um, the forex platform and the FTT platform because you can really combine both to get the most out of Bitcoin. So new active SBSP, what is your question? Okay. Uh, so Dr. Manajit Paul is saying, being a retail trader, how to watch the big houses are doing what? Please explain. Very good question. So obviously this gentleman is serious about trading. Uh, you need to find several really good. So our Bitcoin trade went through. Uh, congratulations to uh, my friend that was trading with me. Uh, we just made 800 bucks um, live. Uh, what I wanted to say was that you can find really respectable and, and good information from the, the most strongest and popular funds in the world. You do have to, um, let me show you a website actually. There is a, a news um, Obviously, you guys need to be a professional in your sphere. Uh, right here, this website, institutionalinvestor.com, it has uh, a lot of, it has all of the research from our profession. Um, there's a lot of different uh, tabs that you can look for, and basically, you can learn which funds are fintech funds, which funds are uh, recession funds which funds are bull only which funds are bear only and also how much they're earning 
how how much can you expect to earn in this profession all of that information you can find on this website institutional investor I'm gonna go ahead and send it to you guys in chat right now and this is for my friend Dr. Manajit Paul there you go sir is Bitcoin variation can be compared to USD for trading Forex uh, I, I don't come I don't compare Bitcoin to currency trading at all it's not the same thing it doesn't follow the same rules it's its own asset so it does require a little bit of time for you to get to know it uh, Zakira Toure, parlez-vous français? Excusez-moi, mais non parlez-vous. No parlez-vous, no comprende. <laughs> I, I don't speak French, although it's one of the most beautiful languages in the world. So Farshad Rouhani, good morning everyone. Rupam Singh, hey, welcome. Good to see you, buddy. So I'm going to repeat myself, guys. Uh, that's it. No more questions, unfortunately. Uh... All right, Prince McQueen is a little bit hurt, I see, uh, in, yeah, we're sorry you feel that way, buddy. <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. Basically, uh, I can see that if you lose a lot of money, you blame everybody but yourself. Dude, it's your fault. It's your fault, and uh, it sucks that you can't take responsibility for your life. This is the, the fact, guys. If you lose money trading, it's absolutely your fault. It's absolutely your greed that got you here and your lack of knowledge and lack of fear that made you lose that much money. The most I ever lost at a given time was $2,000. That's the most I ever lost. And you guys can see I trade twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 accounts. So that just means that risk is very, very important. It's very important that you understand what risk is and how to, uh, how to take it, basically. Um, let's go ahead and finish up the the webinar why do countries around so one last question why do countries around the world I see you Vebi have uh, and many others are working on making their own countries digital currency what's the use cryptocurrency like BTC have value because it works on DS so there is a Canadian cryptocurrency there is a uh, Cuban cryptocurrency China is working on their own cryptocurrency this is all a way of digitizing the economy uh, it's not gonna uh, explode as much as Bitcoin it is the leader it is the premier kind of uh, asset in this class but they are doing it in order to use their own kind of financial system in order to promote their own financial system in order to get people incentivized um, I don't think that it has such a bright future I don't think that it's gonna be very investable um, but it is interesting now the uses of a blockchain ledger are many 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 I'll give you guys a few one way to use a blockchain ledger and that's where everybody sees all the data and nobody can edit it single-handedly is for your health card all of your health data can be saved on this system real estate data all of the data uh, all of the uh, real estate that you have can be placed on this system and it will be safe and it will be um, secure very very powerful uh, next it can be your date of birth like saying uh, uh, um, for statistics of the population very useful it can be used for businesses like I've heard of several models of uh, taxis and uh, logistics companies also incorporating their own ledger so when when Tez or not Tez yeah, can we please ban Tez app? This guy is pissing me off. Sorry, buddy. You're you're out of here. Uh, yeah, guys, don't spam in chat. This isn't a place to get your tech support. This isn't a place to get your support. Um, who was I talking to? So, Vebi have Chuan. Whenever I hear that China is making their own ledger, it's most likely to do with the statistics of their own country and maybe to export some of their own uh, finances across the world. But the US dollar does just that. The US dollar exports all of their debt to the rest of the world. That's what a currency does. So, to have a lot of use for your own uh, yuan cryptocurrency, 
I don't think that there's so much. They're just trying to stay relevant. They're trying to stay on top of this technological wave because he who commands the technology in the modern world is he who is going to you know, be ahead and be competitive. And we live in an uber competitive world. Capitalism is competition. Uh, despite me teaching you guys how to trade, we are trading against each other. If you guys make a wrong trade, I might be the guy on the other side of the trade taking the other position. So that's the world that we live in. And so any kind of competitive advantage you can get, you should really use. All right, guys, let me go ahead and start the raffle. Let's go ahead and do the raffle dash. Uh, I gave you guys the link to my previous webinar. If you went ahead and left your uh, comment with your account ID, Give me a sec, guys. I think it's Raffle Dash, right? That's what we used. Raffle Dash random YouTube commentary. Perfect. So here is the random YouTube comment. This is the video. You guys should have left your comments below. The MT4 configurations. Really recommend you guys watch that video as a lot of people learned a lot of things from this. Uh, I'm going ahead and copying this, pasting it into here, and we're going to get a winner. So first guy, so uh, unfortunately, uh, you did not leave your account ID, so I can't give you a prize, correct? Tinker, my man. Tinker, congratulations, you won. By the way, guys, don't go anywhere. I do have an important announcement after I give away these prizes. So prize uh, number one goes to Tinker. Very glad. Tinker is one of our hardcore um, one of our hardcore visitors and viewers. Dr. Magina Paul. Hey, Manajit Paul, congratulations. You also win some risk-free trades. See, it pays to be consistent. It pays to be uh, to be on time. So Jesse Williams. Perfect. And Vishal Rustagi. Vishal Rustagi, you are our second winner. Now, guys, this is what I wanted to tell you. Next week, we are going to have an interview process between me and one of you guys. If you want to be a part of this interview process, go ahead and leave your account ID. We're not giving away any more raffles, not giving away free stuff, but you will have an opportunity to star in one of our webinars. It's an incredible opportunity to share your view on the market, to get a little bit uh, of promotion for yourself, and also to have have one-on-one -on -one conversation with me um, all you got to do is leave your account ID we will pick three of you to contact and then contact you through the Olymp trade platform Ooh, and guys our trade right here opened up basic altcoin index two minutes thousand dollar trade Anyways, that is going to wrap up the webinar for today. Uh, I do want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, I think that you guys are on the right path. If you consider trading Bitcoin a little bit more than you would normal assets, more than the stock market, more than the Forex market, you may see yourself earning quite a substantial amount of money. I do thank you guys for coming to the webinar. Please go ahead and leave a like. It matters a lot to me. Also, if you share this video with your friends, it will, it will also uh, allow them to learn together with you. And one of the best experiences that I've had in trading was trading with my friends, getting my friends involved in trading and uh, uh, trading together. That way we learn from each other, we help each other, we support each other. And it's always better if there's more pairs of eyes looking at the screen. That way you guys can notice more opportunity. All trading is is being in the right place at the right time and making sure you have some money on your account in order to take that position. What that means is control your risk, control your loss. Don't make outsized uh, position sizes. Take it slow, take it easy, and eventually money will come if all you do is take one good trade. One good trade is all it takes. You can see during my webinars, I try to focus on capturing one good trade. And that's what we've done today. Uh, it, it has been a second trade that looks like it's going to go in our favor. I'm going to leave this open, and I want to thank you guys for coming today. That's it for today, you guys. Make sure to come during our next webinar tomorrow 
the lovely Angie will show you guys how to trade non-farm payrolls. We talked about Bitcoin. It's one of the most incredible assets to trade. Tomorrow, she will teach you how to trade the US dollar, probably the next incredible asset to trade where you will have a lot of positions. Congratulations, you guys. A lot of good trades came through today. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for your time. I wish you guys good luck trading out there and see you all next time. Peace. Thank you.